Hey, look, it's Hutchinson in a harborside bar. Big surprise, huh? Well, what if I told you this was Costa Rica? No. Well, you know the Northeast striped bass study with the Fisherman Magazine and Gray Fish Tag Research? What if I told you that all got started in this bar along the Pacific coast of Costa Rica? Let my friend Billy tell you about it. We had noticed a big void in tagging. There was all types of different tagging models. In Costa Rica, across the spectrum, these guys were already well versed in releasing fish. They were all about releasing fish. So it was easy to launch a concept. So conceptually here at this bar, myself, a couple of buddies, we thought about some concept, we thought about some ideas, and we put together a small group of advisors and said, let's go for it. So we physically launched Gray Fish Tag Research in Costa Rica. There are four marinas that offered to sponsor the startup. And in one week, we started in the north and delivered tag sticks and tags to every marina down of Crocodile Bay. You know, there's strong connections, really, between Atlantic coastal stripers and the rooster fish of the Pacific coast, especially with the anglers who chase them. But I also think perhaps there are some perceptions that can be shaken up a little bit, especially through the use of ever-changing high-tech satellite technology, and especially through the use of catch, tag, and release fisheries. We did a little research. We looked into rooster fish and a few other species and found that no one had ever tagged one with a sat tag. People were telling us, you don't need to waste your time, you don't need to waste your money, because they don't move. They're born on that rock, they stay there the whole life. We catch them when they're small, they're there when they're big, they may go from rock to rock in a very small area. And we felt like, I'm not so sure that was the case. So we got a couple guys together, we got a sponsor, we were able to buy the first satellite tag. It was actually in conjunction with the school in Florida that they gave us the first one to try, because we had access to boat and the fish. And we came down here and tagged one. And the thing went like 300 miles in 18 days. So all of a sudden we knew something's up. So Marina Pez Vela stepped right up and said, we love rooster fish, it's a big part of our market here. We want to buy a couple tags, we want to make this an annual thing, and we want to get behind the study. So this is year five of satellite tagging rooster fish. The data is online available for everyone to see, and there's nothing about a rooster fish that lives on one rock, I can promise you. But what happened at one of our meetings when we were discussing the rooster fish data and how it was so crazy coming off of this relatively inshore species that didn't have big migration, Mike Caruso was there. And him and a couple of guys were whispering in each other's ear, this fish sounds a lot like a striped bass. And there were all these people in the Northeast that know exactly what striped bass do, supposedly. It's an inshore fish, stays along the coast. They come out of the Hudson when they spawn, they run along the coast up to the north. They come back, they go back and spawn. That was fact. We're wasting our time, we're wasting our money. We didn't buy it. Mike said nut. We had a bunch of guys that were crazy. We had a sponsor from Navionics. In year one, we put two satellite tags in in the Hudson River. And both fish went directly to the Hudson Canyon, spent three months offshore all the way up to the northeast in the canyons. The data is so similar. Yes, it all, our whole concept started right here in Costa Rica. Um, this bar, this marina is where the theory and the discussions were formed. And it's evolved into an international tagging program for all species. And one of our biggest hits is absolutely the rooster fish and the striped bass. And we're now starting to look at comparing the data sets, if they're even remotely similar. So far, no, but it's interesting. Satellite tags are a basic product. There's very few available, so we use what we have. Wildlife computers is tag of choice because it's the best producer. There are others that we've tried. Some worked, some didn't. It's the best tag. What it tells us very simply is three components. It tracks the location of the fish, and we can set the interval of time. It tracks the depth, same thing. We can set the interval, and it tracks the sea temperature. And these are used through geometric features of sun and moon and temperature. And at the end of the day, we have had so much success with the striped bass because we know where the fish was tagged. When the tag shows us a straight line from Montauk Point to New Jersey, the tag pops off and we recapture it on the beach directly in front of it, it's unbelievable. But it's an evolving technology. We're working with some new things to get smaller ones and different ones, but overall, the PSAT tag has been awesome for us. I gotta say that every day in Costa Rica is a good day, but there are good days fishing, there are awesome days fishing, and then there are those days when everything doesn't come together just the way you want. And just like back at home, some of those days, especially when you're tournament fishing, just like tagging, 
the stakes can get a little bit stressful. So you reconvene, you sit down, you have a sandwich, and you talk about what your plan B is going to be when all of a sudden the surprises happen. Yeah. Well, that's the story of my life. We have a window of opportunity to get a tag deployed or several tags. We count on the professionals. All day they tell us, don't worry. And it's three o'clock, we have had not had a bite, we haven't had our fish, and we start strategizing on how we're gonna do this again tomorrow, next week, leave it with a pro, because we're out of time. And as we're discussing the plan, the rod bends over, we get the bite, 41 inch rooster, we put our sat tag in, release it perfect. I mean, it was like NASCAR. And right now that fish is swimming around with our tag and we're going home tomorrow. Coming in. Right to the water hose. Is ready to go. Hold on, Ben. You have water in the mouth? Yeah, pliers. Pliers? Pliers. There's some black pliers in my plastic tow glove. Got him? Got him? Here. Okay, get this tag in. Okay, go. Let her go. Um, 36 to fork, 41. Okay, Luke. Pitcher. Overboard. Yeah. Go. tagline, so to speak, is uniting fishermen with science. But it, it's way more than that because if I'm able to be the catalyst from the fishermen to the fish, right, we're the bridge between the captains and the science, and, and we have a model that works. We deploy the tags to the guys, they fish every day. Well, it's no different in our group. We've got guys from a magazine that are great friends, longtime friends in the Northeast. We've got a thriving model, and when we introduce them to a marina, which is a research center here in Costa Rica, and they start to do business and work together and the entire thing blossoms for both all parties. Who wins? The fish, the fishermen, the magazine, the marina, the economy booms and everybody wins. And that's what drives us to do this work. At the end of the day, everybody wins, including the fish. Well, I know a rooster fish is more like a jack, but for a guy from the Atlantic coast, it's also a lot like striped bass on super steroids. And all dressed up for Mardi Gras. Yeah, I could hang my hat here in the future. <laughs>